Hi everyone. First, I've got an announcement to make. I've made a short online course about cryptography. So codes and code breaking, secrets and spies, and anyone can take it. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the details at the end of this video. But today, I want to talk about a particular code. In fact, it's a cipher machine. And this cipher machine should be more famous than it is. You could use it to send secret messages. In fact, it was so secret, even the people using it didn't know what it was. I am talking about the Barbie Electronic Typewriter. And here it is. So this is the Barbie Electronic Typewriter. It is a toy typewriter sold by Mahano between the mid-90s to the mid-2000s. It's a toy typewriter, but it does work as a typewriter. So you could use this to send all your important letters to Ken and Cindy and all your friends. What people didn't know is that it had a secret cipher function. So if you press Shift, Lock and 1, then it turns the typewriter into a cipher machine. So it makes a code in a, a simple way. It just turns one letter into another. Of course, that's no good then if you can't decode your messages. So if you press Shift, Lock and 5, it turns the typewriter into decrypt mode. So if you type the code in, you'll get the original message back again. So if you have two of these machines, you can be sending each other secret messages, which would be good if you knew it could do that. You see, this machine was actually based on an older toy typewriter that Mahano used to make. And it was aimed at older children where the cipher function was like a cool feature. But then that machine was rebranded, repackaged, put into a pink box and rebranded as a Barbie typewriter aimed at much younger children. It was thought that those children wouldn't be interested in the cipher function, so it wasn't included in the instructions, which apparently led to some confusion when your kid's typewriter starts producing gibberish because they had accidentally put it into cipher mode. Now, when I learned about this story, I had to find one. So I went onto eBay and I bought one and here it is. And it's all in working order as well. So you can imagine my excitement when I went to put it into cipher mode and I pressed shift, lock and one and it didn't work. It didn't work. To find out why it didn't work, I've invited a special guest. So my special guest is Sarah Everett, who has her own YouTube channel all about typewriters. It's called Just My Typewriter. Great pun. And Sarah actually has her own story about her quest to find these Barbie typewriters. So let's welcome Sarah to the video. Hi, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Hi. We did it. We've made it. So. You've got your own story about this, but you've got a channel all about typewriters. So really, I want to ask you first is why typewriters? What got you into typewriters, first of all? So what first got me into typewriters is this, there's this crazy documentary called California Typewriter, which has Tom Hanks in it. And I love Tom Hanks. And I had to watch it. The second I watched it, I needed a typewriter. It was about the last typewriter shop in California and all these other typewriter collectors. I had no idea that people still used typewriters. People still use typewriters, which is very surprising. And so once I saw that movie, I had to get my first machine. And as soon as you tell anyone in your family that you collect typewriters, typewriters, you suddenly end up with a collection of like 15 typewriters because everybody's trying to get rid of their typewriter because nobody wants to throw them out and they don't know what to do with them. And then you suddenly become a hoarder like myself. So that's kind of how I got into typewriters. I started with one and then told a bunch of people and somehow ended up here. But, but why the Barbie typewriters? How did that come about? So I was making videos for my YouTube channel, Just My Typewriter, and I liked looking into weird typewriters. I was just Googling strange typewriters on the internet, and I ran into the Cryptology Museum, the Crypto Museum's website, talking about the Barbie typewriter, and I thought it was fascinating. Here's this bright pink children's toy that had this really cool coding and decoding function on it. It really made me think of the Enigma machines, which are a big part of typewriter collecting history is looking at Enigma machines and how they were used and looking at the Barbie typewriter, this like bright pink plastic children's toy was kind of like that old school coding and decoding machine. And I just, I had to have one. And because I had to have one, I spent a year looking for mine because we don't have them here in the U.S. So I had to go to international eBay to find my Barbie typewriters and add them to my collection. 
So it sounds like you're the expert, so maybe you can help me out here. Why didn't my typewriter work? So what's really interesting about the Barbie typewriters is that they were licensed from another company, Mahano, and some of their designs did not include a coding and decoding function. It was kind of like an add-on for some models. So some models of the Barbie machines, which are designed after the exact Mahano machines, don't have the coding and decoding function in them. So yours doesn't, but some of the later models do. And it can also depend on the language variation of the keyboard. So some machines were made for people in France or people in Germany. And sometimes those keyboards were a little bit harder to code for the coding and decoding function, especially if you were translating across you know, different languages on the, the Barbie typewriter. So some models don't have the coding and decoding function and others do. Oh, I was so sad when I discovered it didn't have the, have the function on it. But you've got the working typewriters there, so I think we should have a look at a, a bit of a demonstration. Could you show us the coding and decoding function? Absolutely, and I have here my E117. I have two of them. I have one from 2004 and I have one from 2006. So this is my 2006 one, which we'll use today. And then I've got my 2004 one back there. Both of them have the coding and decoding on them. So if I were to code in shift lock set one, and I were just to type out the alphabet, for example. So I'm typing out some letters in ABC order, and what it is doing is typing out totally different letters on the machine itself. So then to go and decode this, I would hit shift lock and five, and now I'm gonna type out the letters that are actually on the piece of paper. And then I've got the alphabet decoded. Oh, I'm glad we got to see someone's working cipher machine at least. Uh, but I think to finish off, I thought I might give you a challenge. How about that? How about if I send you a message to decode? Uh, I know my machine doesn't work, but fortunately all these ciphers are on the Crypto Museum website. So I'm gonna do it in the old fashioned pen and paper way. I've actually set you a challenge. So here is the challenge that I'm going to give you and I can read this out for you as well. Now this was using code number three. There are actually four ciphers that the machine could do. So if you press shift lock and one, shift lock and two, shift lock three, shift lock four, four different ciphers and then decryption was shift lock five, six, seven and eight. This was sent with uh, cipher number three, and we're gonna see if Sarah can decode this. So you're gonna have to set it into decryption mode. What I think is interesting though about this cipher is it, it wasn't just actually a simple replacing one letter for another on the 26 letters of the alphabet. It was actually a permutation on the small letters of the alphabet and the capital letters and the numbers and the symbols as well. So there's all sorts of things going on in this cipher. So let's see if uh, we can decrypt this. You ready, Sarah? All right, I'm set to decode. <laughs> All right, I've got F semicolon. Okay. KT plus. ASF TAU. Okay. Now HAT space NEEO. All right, let's see. Typewriters are cool. Way! It worked! It worked! Hey, <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much! I want to thank Sarah once again, and you should check out her YouTube channel. That's Just My Typewriter for more typewriter-related content, including Sarah's own Barbie saga. Now, I did say I had something to plug as well, so I have made this short online course. It's called The Mathematics of Cryptography, and I go through like the major hits of cryptography. So I'll start with the simple ciphers and how they're broken with frequency analysis, things like that. But we'll look at more complicated ciphers and how they're broken. We'll look at the Enigma machine, how that works and how that was broken. And then we'll look at internet encryption. It's only a short course. It's about six hours long, maybe eight hours if you do the exercises as well. It is a maths course, but it's a maths course for non-experts. So I've not assumed you've done maths at university. Uh, it's meant to be all self-contained. If you're interested, take a look. Have a look at the course page, have a look at the description and the free previews, and then you can decide whether you think it's for you. If you think it's not for you, that's absolutely fine. That's no problem. It's meant to be for people who are looking for something mathematically interesting to do 
in their free time. If that's you, then perfect. Make sure you use my link here, or the link in the description, and I guess that's enough of that. So from me and from Barbie, if you have been, thanks for watching.